Welcome to our Valves and Controls live video broadcast. We're here in Mansfield, Massachusetts, and it is my great pleasure to uh, be here today with this team. Uh, before we get started, I just wanted to let those online know that you can ask a question live at any time by clicking on the link before, below your player, and we'll get those here at the site and answer those at the end of the presentation. So with that, it is my great pleasure to introduce Occam Trosser, our Vice President of our Global Power Business. Occam? Hello, Jennifer. Thank you. <laughs> good morning, good afternoon, and I'm also allowed to say good evening to everybody. It's a great honor for us to host this webcast here at the Manson facility because it gives us the opportunity to showcase what we are doing here, and you will see a nice view, uh, video later in the show. And it's also an honor for me to make sure that the team here who is doing an extraordinary job is also involved in the whole story. By this, I would like to introduce now David Dunbar, the president of Tyco Valves and Controls, on stage. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, David. Hello. Nice to see you. Hello. Am I on? Can you hear me? OK. It's been a very busy week here at Mansfield, hasn't it? We yeah, got here. I am allowed to confirm that, yeah. So we had the board, uh, board members were here? Uh, five board members were here, but I think we survived very well. Th th that went very well. The board is very pleased with what they saw, so all of you that participated in the tour went very well. Engineering Council was here. We met with Marshall and the team, and I had a service uh, meeting with some of the with guys the here to organize the yard. So yeah. it was a busy week, but still nice to be here. Yeah, well, and thanks for all the support for the disruption this causes. This, this is very important for us to communicate to everybody. Yeah, he will ask for shipments this week, too. Yeah, sure okay, right. All right, thank you. Okay, Arthur. we'll see you. All right, thank you. Yeah, so I think uh, most of you know me. Uh, my name is David Dunbar, the president of Valves and Controls. I'm married, have two kids. Kids are out of the house. They're, they're still in college, though, still on the family payroll. And I mention that because today is my wife's birthday. So she may be, I've linked in, we sent her a link. So Joni, happy birthday. I'll be home tomorrow. We did a uh, first uh, webcast last fall from Vanessa. And it was, it was right after we'd rolled out the new global organization to all the countries in the world. And I really wanted to take time to explain what we were trying to accomplish and make the vision that we're trying to achieve very concrete. So we gave some good examples. And, um, it, had great feedback from doing it in the facility like, like we're doing here. Our vision is to be the undisputed global leader in the markets we serve. And we're going to do that by focusing on two things. Leading with products, establish product leadership. That at our core, we are an engineering company. And we're going to better serve customers. And our central challenge to that is to pull together the strong brands, the strong companies that have made us who we are, that were brought together through acquisition to coordinate globally. And I have a, a visual. For those of you who are here, or anybody watching on the web, if you only have 30 seconds to devote to this webcast, if you watch the next 30 seconds, you'll understand the strategy. Are you guys going to roll the video? There we go. You see those powerhouse brands all coming together over the years through acquisition to form Tyco. Tyco Valves and Controls, the undisputed global leader. So last, last fall, I think that's beautiful. They did a great job on that. Thank you. And now we're going to do a low res version so we can use it in PowerPoints, right? Um, because I think in one image, it, it, it's, it, it makes clear the challenge we face. All these companies have different, different plants, different history, different customers, different product lines. How do you coordinate? And last fall in, um, at, at Vanessa, we showed some great examples of how to do that. And today, through the broadcast, I think you'll see some other examples of how we're learning to play at a higher level. We're learning to orchestrate and coordinate around the world so we can move towards this vision of being the undisputed global leader. And I was so delighted. Yesterday, we, we took a really a major step that will help us in achieving our global vision with the, when we closed on the acquisition of 75% uh, of KEF holdings in the Middle East. Uh, so first of all, I have a congratulations for everybody that this was a lot of work. Doing an acquisition is a tremendous amount of work. And this has actually been in the works for, for quite some time. Yesterday was the closing. KEF brings to us a substantial footprint in the Middle East. It is an integrated valve and uh, foundry and, and valve manufacturing facility. 
great relationships with customers in the Middle East. And they also will become part of our global supply chain. So we strengthen our presence in the Middle East. We strengthen our, our, our global footprint and our global supply chain. We bring in great customer relationships. It really hits all the key boxes in our, in our global strategy. Maybe more important than that, though, it brings us some great people. And we have great new colleagues with, uh, with this acquisition. The founder, Faisal Kodakolan, uh, founded the company in the early 90s. And it has grown to be the only integrated valve manufacturer in the Middle East. And virtually all the employees moved to the region from their home countries, seeking better opportunity to be part of this vision, to build this company. You know, the same kind of groundbreaking presence in the Middle East that all of our companies at one time brought to their industries, like Crosby and like Anderson Greenwood. So we wanted to take a minute to welcome our new colleagues. So there's a camera up here. Would like everybody to turn and wave and say, you see that camera up there? Yeah. On the tripod. Now, can you wave? Can you wave and say, welcome to Tyco. <laughs> so we'll be, Akin, could you hand me that water, please? We will be in, um, thank you, in the Emirates next week. And we have a webcast on Thursday, right, right Jennifer? So we'll, we'll start rolling out more details of the acquisition. Uh, and what our plans are and how we'll, how we'll proceed. Critical to becoming a global leader is our performance on many fronts. I already talked about product leadership, customers, but a global leader also has leading financial performance. So I want to quick, provide a quick update on how we're doing with our financial performance. First of all, year to date, if we look at our orders and our revenue, it's no secret that the industrial economies are picking up. Energy companies are investing. They're releasing funds for large projects, and we're benefiting from that. If you look across the top, our orders this year in the first quarter grew 6% over the last year. Second quarter, 10%. And our third quarter is closed, but we're still finalizing the details, and we, we can't communicate final results. But it looks like 13 to 15% growth. So we continue to see orders grow. Now, as you know, it takes some time before an order converts into a sale, and we ship it. At Q1, our sales actually declined from prior year. Second quarter, we were up 1%. And now, it looks like uh, Q3, we had forecast to grow 10%. Looks like it'll be somewhat less than that, 6 to 8 I think closer, closer to 8%. This represents, as you know, a lot of hard work around the company to ramp up our, our supply chain, ramp up capacity, and to meet, meet customer needs. So I'm really pleased to see the, the progress here and the, the result of, the, of everybody's hard work. Margins, though, are somewhat of a different story. If you look across the top, you can see in this year, from Q1 to Q2 to Q3, our margins have increased from 12.4 to 13.1 and out to 15 and 15.5. That's the kind of progression we'd expect to see. As sales grow, we expect margins to expand, too. But if you compare to the prior year, in every quarter, this quarter, we've been lower than last, than last year. So last year, Q1, we were 12.7. This year, 12.4. Last year, 14.2 in Q2. This year, 13.1. And last year was 17% in Q3. Very strong margin performance. This year looks like we'll be in the 15s. Now, there are reasons for that that we understand. We have more project business flowing through now. We've also in, we've, we've been investing in the business. We've hired salespeople, engineers, your marketing uh, people. And you'll hear some of the things that we're doing with that investment. And long term, we need to get to 17% plus. So we understand that, and we know how to do that. However, in the middle of June, we received a roll-up of the forecast from the global organization that said, for June, there's only two weeks left in June, we got a forecast that said there's $8 million operating income risk for June. But with only two weeks left to go, there's, you know, there's hardly any time to do anything. So I pulled together the Valve leadership team and said, what, what are we going to do about this? I mean, the, the old instincts, and many of you have been through this, the old instincts would be, stop everything. I mean, don't, you know, don't approve anything, leave all headcount open, stop programs, and think only about making the number. But I was very pleased with the, with the maturity of the discussion that we had. The, uh, the, the, the entire Valve leadership team recognized 
We've, we've done a lot of things in the last year to reinforce that we are investing for the long term. We are interested in achieving a, an audacious vision of being the global leader, and we have to invest to do that. So we decided we need to do this the hard way. We, we need to meet our, our financial commitments for the quarter, but, but we can't sacrifice the long term to do that. So I, I, I sent out a memo. Many of you have seen it, and I'm sure the actions are rolling through. We're asking everybody to look at a few things. In the short term, take a balanced, a balanced look at our spending. You know, one of the obvious things that we've looked at is travel. In the last year, with our global organization, we've really accelerated travel. And that was necessary for people to get to know each other. But you know, we know each other now. And we don't have to travel every time just to meet face to face. So we're encouraging people to use, use the web, use the, use the telephone, reduce the, number, reduce the number of travel for internal meetings. Customer meetings are a different thing. Within our plans, I don't think we've taken full advantage of the, of the sourcing opportunities we have with our IPOs around the world. So I'd like to see an acceleration of, uh, uh, of, of movement to, our, to, to reduce our, our cost of purchase materials, especially at a time when inflation is starting, starting, to, uh, starting to, uh, to rise. That's on the cost end. On the sales end, the best way to increase our margins is increase our top line, increase our sales. So th there's a few things we can do here. Pricing discipline has been a little weak. We've, uh, we have a lot of discounts that have been offered without proper authorization. We're going to tighten that down. That's, that, that's a very quick way to impact the top line. We have uh, some business that is uh, short cycle business. The uh, Stafford site, for example, has a lot of sales that go to distributor stock. As the industry picks up around the world, you know, we'd like to work with the distributors to increase their stock. That can have an impact in Q4. But the biggest impact that, that hits any quarter is the, the coordination that, that's required to ship large projects. And you know this very well. I mean, how often have we come to the end of a month, sure we were going to ship a project, but customer inspection was delayed. Documentation wasn't ready. The, the agent that was going to come in, his flight was delayed. Or you know, whatever happens, and we didn't make the shipment. And th this, is a, this is a very good example of what's happening with us as a business. As, as we become more global, and we have sales organizations around the world working with multiple plants to ship complex large projects, it requires better coordination, longer term planning, so that when we make a forecast, we can keep it. You know, this, this is our bottom line foundational uh, mark of a leader, that we can make and keep short term financial commitments. I'm counting on everybody, everybody in the, uh, on the web too, to do this in a way that meets our short-term commitments, but also does not sacrifice these important investments for the long term, because we are in this for the long haul. Now, we have a great example of, um, of coordination. Well, we did, this, did the broadcast last in, um, in, uh, in Vanessa. I don't know if you, if you watched it. We did an exercise showing uh, musically the difference between everybody doing their own thing and everybody being coordinated, and we did the first notes of Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. Boom, 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 and it was, it was great. Well, you know, we've, we've learned and grown since then. We're doing some more sophisticated things, so we thought you could do something more sophisticated. You have a little bag on your chair, if you'd take it out, please, and there's a bell in there. Grab your bell, ring your bell a little bit. When it's out of the bag, take it out of the bag, Akim. Out of the bag. There we go. We did not ship bells to the other. That sounds that sounds good. All right, now we're just gonna just just to get just to get warmed up. We're in sections, so every section has a, has the same note. So when I point to your section, I want you to ring your bell. So okay, good. That's C. That wasn't pointing at you. Okay, now now it's your turn. Okay, all right, good. Now very nice. Good. Oh, oh. No? Okay, now. Okay, there we go. Okay. Just look at the guy next to you. He, you know. <laughs> okay, now, now we're gonna try now we're gonna try to do something a little more sophisticated. We have different notes and we're gonna we're gonna play a little tune here. So when I point to your section, ring your bell, and when I point to the next section, stop your bell. Okay? We'll start in the middle. Ready?
Hey, that's, that's pretty good. Let's do one more. Let's do one more. Uh, one more practice here, and then we'll have the Boston Pops come in and join us. Okay, ready? Uh, here. Hey, that's terrific. Now, we do. We don't. We have a virtual Boston Pops here. And um, so I'm uh, Arthur Fiedler. That was his, when I grew up. We watched Arthur Fiedler in the Boston Pops, and I remember that. So w you're going to hear a, um, a count. Are we going to do this now with the, the count? There'll be a four count, and then we'll and then we'll start. And so same thing when I point at you. Play. Okay, ready. <laughs> Very nice. Pretty good. Huh? You happy with that? Very nice job. Very nice job. Well, that's, um, that's a little more sophisticated than doing bum 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 bum. So, so the, rest of this, the rest of this webcast, we want to explain how we actually, around the world, we are coordinating in more sophisticated ways that will require us to reach this goal of being an undisputed global leader. You know, we are. We're an engineered products company. And our, our ultimate promise to our customers is that we will solve problems with, with an engineered product appropriate, appropriate to their need. We've been around a long time. And we wanted to take a little trip down memory lane here. We just start the video. So we've got uh, scenes of the old industrial world. You see uh, uh, assembly lines. And we were there. Our products were founded before we helped power the Industrial Revolution. Here's Rentham. Oh, you saw Dave Tebow's car outside that old picture there. And uh, here's some of our products here. You know, we have been around a long time. And our, our companies were founded on innovation, solving a customer's problem in an innovative way at a good cost point with a required quality. And that created this collection of companies that make us Tyco valves and controls now. Well, the world is a little more complex now. And Innovating is a little more complicated by the fact there are more competitors, customers are more demanding, and they're very specific about their needs. And here are a couple examples of some recently released products that are beautiful products. They're highly engineered, great performance, they have advantages over the, the competitive offering, but they have not achieved our sales objectives. Now, the, the center one uh, is. Uh, is uh, is a combination project between Biffy and FCT. The others are composite valves done in, done in Breda. The composite valves actually were released just over two years ago. We're, their sales are starting to ramp up. We've sold almost a million dollars cumulatively since, since the release. But we were so excited when we released this, we would have predicted it to be 10 million now. Now, I was a product manager once, and I've got my own experience in releasing products, and it is very hard. So I, I don't show this to be critical about anybody. These are great products that, that demonstrate the best of our innovation. But if, if we're going to lead the market, we need to do everything we can to assure that when we release a product, it's the right price point, we understand the customer, and we can reach our sales objectives. Now, fortunately, we have some good success stories. There was a project uh, called Magnum Force. Some of, you, uh, some of you have worked on it, which was a joint project between uh, Sempel, Westlock, Morin, the Chinese sales organization was involved to uh, communicate customer needs along with marketing and product management in both places. And uh, this was just released about a year ago, Frank, I think. We, we in our, our cumulative sales are over a million dollars. Customers are very happy. Look at this quote from the customer. Uh, the team from Tyco Valves and Controls really listened to our needs and concerns and brought a great product to China. We are excited to work with your talented organization. This is an application we did not serve at all. Severe service uh, applications in, in power plants in China. So, so the question is, how do we take what we learned here and apply this to future developments so we can continually get better at developing new products? So I've asked Frank Galuli to join me to talk about our, um, our, our development process. Sorry, Frank, the, my water made a little. <laughs> it's just a little. Uh, it's little, just little water. water. Yeah. How are you, David? <laughs> Good. It's a great group here. 
Happy to have you here. Thanks. Well, Frank, let's let's get right at it. Tell us about Rally Point. What is Rally Point? Well, you know, Rally Point is is um, an idea that allows us to take um, very good product ideas that our customers, our marketing, and our salespeople come up with, and put them into a repeatable, definable process that gives leadership um, visibility into what's going on, uh, allows us to generate good business cases, and gives us a, an ability to see what's happening all along through the process. So there's a number of uh, what we call rally points. There's six of them, which I think you can see on the slide. And the great thing is that you can see the levels of the, of the organization that actually participate. So engineering is involved, manufacturing, sales, marketing. And they're all involved at the right periods of time. So you know, engineering isn't there for every day. Right. But we do have a leader for the project, and that uh, project manager is responsible to deliver the outcome at the end of Rally Point Six. Well, I'm really pleased that we've you know, we've adapted this, and I think we've got a picture here of a of a team. Well, we um, the the Rally Point process was adapted for Tyco valves and controls uh, mainly by uh, team members in the pressure management group, mm -hmm. and this is a picture of a recent training that was held down at the Stafford facility led by our, our PMG uh, engineering uh, leaders and some of our Six Sigma people. And we've been working on a number of projects. Uh, we took advantage of this particular training to send a few of our leaders and get them educated a little bit more on how Rally Point can work for us, how does it work for the power generation industry and our customers. And I think you can see in the back there, uh, Don Coons, who's our uh, manager of Don's here. nuclear Where's engineering. Don? Wow, great. Front row. Front row. Good to see you, Don. <laughs> All right. Well, so, so tell us about yeah, this, this project in, in power, the MSSV project. Great project. And, and what, what better place to talk about uh, mainstream safety valves for the nuclear market than here in Mansfield? Um, the team here is highly invested in, in this business. And I think you know that, uh, that nuclear power is one of our core pillars of our power generation uh, strategy. So. We, um, we've been working on the, this, this project for mainstream safety valves, and uh, we've been looking at our performance back in FY10. Mm -hmm. um, we noticed that we were losing market share in France, China, Korea, and Hopkin, the United Hopkin States. Hopkin must have been pissed. Well, I, I, I do remember. He hates to lose orders. I, I, I do remember a, a conversation where he <laughs> politely suggested that we might want to focus on, uh, on uh, this area. Um, at the same time, we were realizing that the orders that we were winning mm -hmm. were eroding on some of the margins. Mm -hmm. So we had sort of two ideas that, uh, that we needed to come to grips with. Um, so uh, I gave a call down to, uh, to Dave Parity. This particular application and product crosses both uh, PMG and power businesses. And I asked David you know, what he thought about uh, launching a joint product project together so that we can address some of these concerns we have in the market. Um, so we had this, this bit of conversation. Uh, David suggested we, we pull in the rally point mm -hmm. process. You know, I have had some experience with that yep. during the Magnum Force sure. project. So we put two and two together. Uh, we agreed that, uh, that Don Coons, uh, who is our, our nuclear marketing sure, uh, leader, would, uh, would man the, uh, the helm of this project. And we gave them actually very little direction. We, uh, we set the bar high. Mm -hmm. We asked them to improve our market share and to lower our cost positions on two different continents. Mm -hmm. So not yeah. an easy thing. Not a small objective either. And uh, what happened was you know, Don took the, the initiative. Um, he learned about Rally Point, went to some classes, formed a team, mm -hmm. cross-functional, engineering, uh, manufacturing, mm -hmm. marketing, oh, yeah, all the sales. Here. And, uh, so let's look at where you're at in the, in the project. Right, so, so the, uh, the idea came about back in November. We did a number of, uh, of critical processes to, to get the program running. We put together a key business case. Um, that business case was vetted and approved by management. Uh, we went through uh, a number of rally points, and in fact, uh, just this past week, Don and the team 
has achieved rally point two. Two weeks ahead of schedule for those of you paying attention. Good job, John. Uh, and, and, and just like everybody here in the audience, we're in the business of overachieving. So uh, we're really proud of, uh, of Don and, and, the, and the team. And Don's anxious to share his progress with the rest of the world. So tell us about this. Well, website. you know, one of, one of the great things about, uh, about real-time real data is uh, we can tell everybody how it's going. And uh, Don uh, and, and the marketing communications group mm. put up a website. Uh, you can uh, join us, keep the pressure mm. on the team, make sure that we're achieving our goals. Mm. And there's even a link there to send Don uh, an email in case, uh, <laughs> in case he's fallen behind. Well, or give him some and encouragement. And Don did not like the idea. I wanted to put a webcam at his desk. But we, we, we didn't go that far. <laughs> but uh, th that's great. I'm really pleased that you've uh, adopted this. And I think we're on, on the right track. And just to see how this, how this, as applied to an entire product line, in Pressure Management Group, they've, they've adopted RallyPoint across their entire product line. And you can see a, a list of all their, their projects over the next three to five years, how they will refresh their product line. Okay. So you know, one way to look at this, the, the way Frank described it, it's like a musical score. It, it describes very precise interactions of all the different pieces of the organization to come together to maximize our success for new product introduction. I'm very excited about it. I think we're on the, on the right track. It, it's great. you know, And I, and I just uh, I just drove up yesterday from Jersey City, New mm. Jersey, and uh, I spent the last three days with 14 of our sales leaders uh, addressing some of the collaboration and process opportunities we have there. So I'd like to say hello to the yeah. team down there in Jersey City. And uh, you know, this is another example of how we're trying to get out of the silos, uh, work together, and come up with the right solutions for our right. customers. Well, thanks so much, Frank. Okay. Great. Right, thanks a lot, Dave. Very good. Good job. Now, we could actually do a three or four hour um, presentation because there are a lot of good things happening in the organization. So I wanted to do a, a few quick bright spots to share some progress in other parts of the business. The automation, the actuation of controls business recently opened their smart service center in Brazil. This is a pilot of an exciting concept that was actually developed in Australia. Not only will we sell and do installations of uh, actuation of control products, we'll also provide advanced services to integrate our products into customers, uh, customers' networks. If this is successful, we'll roll this out around the world. The mining business had a recent win, a million dollar order that, that combined the uh, organizations working together in Australia, India, the US, and Mexico for, for uh, an application with a highly corrosive medium that developed a new alloy for the K-Lock products, got a million dollar order. You know, you know, four, four different country organizations working together. Within process, Last fall, we talked about the Veolia agreement. It was our first global frame agreement. Veolia had come to us every year, in prior years, into our Paris office in our old regional structure, and our Paris office said, we don't do global agreements. So that was it. They went off and signed global agreements with other customers. Last year, we signed a global agreement with them. Orders are now flowing. We're now getting twice the level of orders from Veolia we did before. We think this would be worth seven to $10 million. Triple offset valve, Vanessa working with a power group, have identified a new opportunity, been very innovative in solving an application in molten solar plants to handle molten sodium. This is, this, so we have a triple offset valve power. First sales were in Spain, a recent order in the US, so global project, very exciting. I was in India a couple weeks ago. We had a, a large customer event, over 200 customers uh, joined us. They, most of them spent the entire day there going through product training with their product managers. And, and the customers in these markets are really excited about working with Tyco. When they see us, they see Tyco. They don't have the history of all the individual brands. They expect us to act as a global leader and bring all of our expertise to them. So it was, it was really a thrill to work with them. And one, one of the bright spots in the company also as you know, last year we moved to this facility here in Mansfield, which is a, one of the, the premier nuclear engineering and testing facilities in the world. So we've asked Ockham Trosser to, to do a walkthrough and, and, and present to every, everybody here, you know it well, and everybody who's watching the capabilities here at Mansfield. Welcome, Ockham, again. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and I have to say, uh, David said, OK, on the main team safety was that I maybe are not so happy but uh, he's right, but we are working on that, and therefore I think that's the right way to address this issue. So uh, what we'd like to do now is to give everybody on, uh, who is on the webcast uh, 
a chance to follow what we are doing here. I think it's a great opportunity that David gave us to the chance to provide this video, which is also available now for us, so we can also use it for our customers. So I would like to say, let the show start. Let's go. Opening this facility last year established flow control as a leader in research and testing for the power industry. Back in 1871, when Crosby began here, nuclear power was unheard of. No one could have predicted the future direction the business would take. Now Mansfield is staffed by some of the world's most experienced nuclear engineers and many other experts. We are very closely following developments in the world markets. We know that nuclear power will remain an essential means of meeting the growing demand for energy in many parts of the world. And we know that Mansfield prov provides a unique capability and service that are essential to ensuring the safe operation of existing plants, as well as meeting numerous standards for c future installations. Here we can perform the highly accurate measurements and the sensitive adjustments needed to determine how valve components have, un have behaved under a variety of conditions. Along with providing design and test services, Mansfield is a major supplier of pressure relief valves and also offers globe check, control, and instrumentation valves. The move away from older reactors to new generation three designs has pushed the size and pressure requirements of these systems as we respond to the customer demands. It is important to note that though Mansfield is focused on the needs of the nuclear power industry, no radioactive material is used here. Nuclear plants generate power by heating water to produce steam, which powers an electric generator. So, one of the most important safety functions of these valves is steam control. Mansfield is one of the only two facilities in the world, I like to say the entire world, capable to perform high pressure, high volume tests for these applications. The competing facility at Karlstein in Germany is out of commission due to a recent pressure failure. Because of that, Mansfield's capabilities are even more in demand. We are even performing tests for some of our competitors in the industry, and may I say, with very good margins. The energy released during some of these test procedures is pretty impressive, as you can see here. So we can see the test sequences now. We currently test steam valves up to 1,300 PSI with flow rates of 2 million pounds per hour. The results are captured in detailed reports and data displays. The data captured can be used to inform engineering and design processes, ensuring that real-world scenarios are incorporated in facility planning. So, we are committed to continue our support of the nuclear industry. We plan for it, we innovate for it, and I like to say we play an important role in it. So by this short view, uh, movie, I also would like to say thank you to the whole team here in Mansfield. I'm sure that they are pleased on one hand that we did it, but it caused also some issues. I understand that, and I'm sure what I said in the beginning with David, I'm sure we will be pushed to ship this month, hopefully better than forecast, right? Okay. So I like now to, uh, because nuclear, you know that Mansfield is one of the three facilities we have in nuclear for within valves and controls. We have also two other sites I would like to talk a little bit about. It's Gris Amontier and also the caution brush uh, plant Sampel in Germany. And I think with these three facilities and the products these uh, facilities can support, we can really cover a lot of the demand which is currently coming. And I'd like to echo what we heard yesterday also from the Taiko board. The Taiko is still committed 
true nuclear. We continue to invest in that. And we like to, to give, give our customers really the opportunity with our products to make a more safe environment within, within the nuclear uh, industry and the plants. But we have even begun a program to circulate new engineering talent within these uh, three uh, entities because this is a huge talent base we have in the, in, uh, in the locations and we like to utilize it. And a recent graduate of an uh, engineering school here of the University of Connecticut has just joined us, Brandon Jonsky. Please stand up <laughs> so we can welcome you. Hey, Hopefully you are not too surprised about it. No. It's OK? He okay. had his Mansfield shirt on yesterday. And we also have, we have another, uh, another okay. recognition we'd, we'd like to make for a, for, for a long-term service. But I'm only 11 support. years with the company. So. It's not for you. You oh. got yours last month. Oh. So. <laughs> now, we, uh, now, we learned yesterday. Now, Bev, I have to ask your apology because I learned yesterday that w w you, you just received your 50 award, 50 year award uh, for service here, and I don't, I hate to embarrass you, but you know, <laughs> you are you're so valued here, and one of the one of the great things we have in Tyco around the world is, is is people who have made the companies great, and it would mean so much to everybody here and and around the world to just be able to show their appreciation to everything you did. So we asked asked Dave to just say a few words so people can get to know you. Well, the Bev joined uh, Crosby Valve and Gage Company in 1961. I think it was the Kennedy administration at that point in time. <laughs> Elvis Presley was on top of the uh, Elvis charts. Elvis Presley. Um, she's a multiple recipient of uh, quality improvement awards over her career. Uh, has been recognized numerous times as Employee of the Month and has served in an outstanding manner in our order entry department over the last 10 years. So again, a tremendous accomplishment, Bev. 50 years of continuous service. So. Thank you so much. Congratulations. It's been a pleasure. And this is it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Well, thank you, Bev. You know, we didn't tell you ahead of time because we thought you wouldn't show up. <laughs> I have learned that about you. So, so to be a global leader, we have to lead with our financial performance. We have to reestablish product leadership. We also have to do a better job of serving customers, and especially global customers that have more sophisticated demands and that will require us to orchestrate our global organization to meet their needs in new ways. In the last year, we had a great experience in, in meeting the request of Shell for a global frame agreement. And I wanted to share, the, share this with you. We, we actually had the team that worked on this put together some, some quotes of their experience. So I'd like you to, to play that, please. We were challenged to really think about way beyond the, uh, the present state of the, of the Tyco business. Uh, one thing I witnessed in this process was the fantastic motivation and enthusiasm from our team to contribute to the process. There's no one person that could have accomplished this on their own. We had a centralized team with a common vision and strategy on how to, uh, to achieve uh, the, uh, the goals and objectives. For the first time, we have been working as a, a global company. By beginning with a strategic vision to speak as one Tyco is what enabled us to form a deal team and then ultimately enabled us to make a presentation from that platform. We were able to pull together resources on a global basis that would have been difficult in our old regional structure. We were actually speaking about benefits and value that Tyco can bring across the global organization. We're not just uh, presenting ourselves as a valve manufacturer, but we're coming in with a global solution. I think the, the best thing was that we promoted ourselves as Tyco, just one company. We present one face to the customer. It was the first time that they saw a global approach. I don't think this has ever been done before in this way. That is impressive uh, for this company, and I was proud to be a part of it. Wow. I, I played that four times after I got it. I, I was so excited to hear those quotes. That team worked so hard to, to, uh, to put this together. 
And we've asked Sherry Updike to join us. And Sherry, we, we talked a couple weeks ago, and she said, you know, David, I don't think I should, I, I don't think I need to travel there for two reasons. One is uh, the comments I made before about, about controlling our costs. The second thing is you know, we want to demonstrate video technology. So we've got Sherry joining us from, uh, from somewhere in Houston. We'll find out where she is today. Hello, <laughs> Sherry. Good morning, Mansfield. <laughs> Good morning. Well, you must be very proud of the, of the Shell team. We are, we, I certainly am very proud. There were over 80 people, though, that contributed to the success of this, this proposal and this deal that we put forward to Shell. So the very first thing I want to do is thank the people that helped to contribute to the success that we've had. So if you guys can actually all join me in thanking those 80 people around the globe who have contributed over 10,000 man hours of work for pricing 18,000 lines of, of product. And that took six months of, um, of work and 10 face-to-face -face negotiations to accomplish all of that. So I really want to just take a moment and say thanks to all of you around the world who have helped okay, us. That's, that's helped worth us a round of applause. That. All right. Now, one thing I would like you to explain to everybody is the, the proposal itself was, was so innovative. We didn't simply give a price list and a list of products. We went, we went far beyond that. Right. So we used a concept called MESOs, which is, um, it stands for Multiple Equivalent Simultaneous Offers. It was a methodology that we introduced to the global sales team in November when we had our global sales meeting for oil and gas. And, and the basic um, premise of Mesos is that you present your customer with a number of options and packages, if you like. We knew that when we went into this proposal with Shell, we weren't going to be the lowest price supplier. So what we wanted to do in these packages is show Shell what we could do, what we could do over and above what they have asked for. So we did that in um, a number of elements, if you like, that had varied. It was 11 pages. The package was uh, 11 pages. It had 35 elements, and it had things that varied like safety and reliability and service and training and business meetings. And we, we had a number of, of options that we provided Shell, and they could choose from those three packages. Well, I, w I was really impressed. I think we made a great first impression to Shell that, that we, we can be more than a product supplier, but a valued partner. So what do you think that will be the business impact? We have already been approached, Hans Van Leer this week has been approached by Shell to start working on a project in Singapore. So Lawrence, if you're listening, it's coming <laughs> to a site near you. It's, it's the um, Bugis project in Singapore. We are the only butterfly valve supplier that is currently qualified. So although we share in this award with another supplier, we are the only one at the moment who's able to supply. So we're looking, we're very much looking forward to, to taking on that project. And this is an example, this will be not the first example of how we'll be expected to work as a global team in the future. So we're excited about this. I, I was so excited about the, the the, the whole process, but I think maybe the most valuable thing we take from this long term is our ability to work with customers in this way. So the, the, the negotiation approach, the MESO uh, approach is a practice I'd like to see adapted across the organization, just like rally point and product development. This is best practice for negotiating frame agreements. So thank you for your personal leadership, Sherry, uh, and, and congratulations on the success. Thank you. All right, thank you. That was, um, that was such a journey from December through to uh, the award, which, uh, which, which you heard about in May, and now we're negotiating final agreements. But a great success. We're the only global, we're the, many global co companies bid, we're the only global company that was awarded. The others went to smaller regional players. So, I mean, it shows we've come a long ways. Now, last fall in Vanessa, I shared our priorities for 2011. And I wanted to give a little update. The year is not over. I thought I'd just highlight a few to show what kind of progress we're making. 
Uh, I'll just pick a couple. Strength and succession and OLR planning for each global organization. I color this green because I'm so pleased at how I've seen the global organization step up and uh, you know, embrace the new responsibilities, begin working in new ways, and we're creating global leaders, future global leaders around the company. The next few have to do with um, our vital world and EHS uh, objectives. And I've, I've rec the, the recordable injury rate, I've, uh, I've colored you know, between yellow and green because the year's not over. We're actually on track to meet our objective, but we can never let our guard down on safety. Safety is extremely important. And I just won't give a green until we're at the end of the year. 100% um, uh, guide to ethical conduct compliance over time. We got everything done. I think the deadline was actually today, wasn't it? We were done a few weeks ago. So, and, and we were the first segment, not that we're competitive with the other segments in Tyco, but we, we were the first segment in Tyco to complete it. So everybody here participated. I want to thank you all. In past years, we did not complete it on time. So this was a good, uh, good accomplishment. A couple other things on operational effectiveness. This last year, we created linking mechanisms to, to avoid creating new silos in the new global organization. So the Engineering Council was here earlier this week. The Operations Council, Damian Mackey and uh, Antonio Cafodero are leading that. Uh, a Marketing Council existed before the Sales Council. Frank mentioned that. He was there this week. Uh, the Product Management Council, uh, the Services Council. These teams are doing a lot of exciting work to, to share best practices, and move us forward as a global organization. So I color that one green. The next couple, you know, we're making progress, but this is, these are tough challenges. Supply chain complexity, how do we reduce it? How do we manage our sourcing costs? Consolidated suppliers and increased purchasing leverage. We frankly haven't given a lot of attention to that, and we need to give that more attention. I think the reason is just coming together as a global organization has, has taken a lot of energy, but now, particularly with the margin challenge I described before, We've got to get on this, and we've got to get on it uh, quickly and with, with real energy. Uh, transactional and value pricing plans, we're making good progress. We have a transactional pricing team in North America. I got my first report from it, and it's great to have the report. My jaw dropped when I saw the results of the report, but now we know what we have to, to work on. The, I mentioned before, we have uh, discount authorization levels. That, um, that are in place, and we're not always following them. So now that we have a team to follow it and reports, you know, we can improve that. Uh, achieving above market growth, you saw the growth earlier. I colored these green and yellow. Uh, perform voice of customer, we've had a few voice of customer projects. I just want to see more. Before we do anything significant, we need to find out what customers want. Product management plans for all major product lines, they're coming together. You saw the, um, the engineering roadmap for pressure management group. I want to see a similar plan for all global organizations so we know what we're going to do to refresh our product lines over the next three to five years. So we're, ma we're making progress on all of these things. And I'm so proud of the organization. You know, we live, we have a complex business. We were 70 companies at one time. We're all come together as valves and controls now. Our customer demands are changing. They change rapidly and dynamically. The Shell uh, frame agreement, this is something they didn't try a few years ago. We have to step up and, and, and perform at that level. It will require greater coordination and orchestration of our business than, than we've had to do before. Our competitors don't even have the option to try the things that we're trying. They don't have the global teams. They don't have factories in every part of the world. They don't have service centers everywhere. They don't have all the things that we've talked about today. So even though it's a challenge and a lot of work, we are, we are, in, we are in pole position to, to achieve our vision. And so as we work harder to, to, to learn how to, how to orchestrate, how to coordinate, how to work together across our complex global organization, we have a tremendous opportunity to reach our vision of being the undisputed global leader. Thank you. So with, uh, now I hope you all have been thinking about some questions. We're going to bring oh, yeah. Jennifer up. Yeah, I told them earlier yeah. they have to think of really great questions. We actually have two mics in the audience for those that are, that are here with us. And for everyone watching online, there's a link you can click through. We have someone monitoring the mailbox, and they'll bring up questions to me as they come in. So I do have one pre-submitted one, okay. David, for you. 
Uh, what is the status of our service strategy? Service strategy, to, in, a, in a word, the service strategy has been, has been difficult for us because there's a strong need to have local presence, local focus on customers. But there's also opportunity to have consistency in the way we deliver service, the tools we use, the software we use. And there's been, been debates. How do we best do both things at once? We formed a service council last year. And in the last, I'd say in the last six months, the service council has made a lot of progress in coming up with a proposal that I think, I think finds the right balance between those things. We've got a uh, Valve leadership team meeting at the end of July. We're going to spend substantial time on this service proposal. And I, I'm very excited about, about where we're headed with that. So I would say that by the end of the fiscal year, you know, we'll, we'll be communicating where we're, where we're headed. Great, great. Uh, I wanted to just ask Katie in the back of the room if she has any questions that came in. And she's bringing me a question. Two questions. I'm going to grab the water. Hey, I have a question. Who won the Stanley Cup this year? Uh, <laughs> gee, I, grew, I, I was talking know. with these guys. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up in Minnesota when the North Stars were there. It was at the Esposito's here, um, um, Bobby Orr. I hated you guys. I hated the Bruins. <laughs> I got over it, though. I, I'm he happy to be here. Now. <laughs> well, the North Stars are, went to Dallas. Or anything, so. Um, so we have something that was submitted from uh, a team member in Beijing Finance. What are the main challenges that we face in the current what valve time industry? Is it there? Wow! Thank you for Good watching. For in Thank Beijing. you for watching, not, <laughs> not waiting for the replay. I'm sorry. What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> what are the main challenges that we face in the current valve industry? You know, I think our main challenge is, is just is reaching our aspiration. Uh, we're, we're market leaders in, um, we're, we have the, either the number one or two position in every vertical market we serve. We're number one in virtually every geography. We have 7% market share. To be the global leader, I think we need to be 20%. Well, that's three times more. So to, per, to perform at that level and achieve that level of, of performance, you know, everything we talked about today, we've got to just continue to accelerate and get it. So I, I think it's really, uh, everything is in our court, and the, and the greatest challenges are our, our, our ability to reach, reach the vision as quickly as we can. Okay, great. I just wanted to open it up to anybody here at the plant that has a question. We have two mics. Just raise your hand, and we'll get somebody over there. Oh, we have one over here. Uh, David, um, I'm Paul Dalpy. I work in field service. And the question I raise is, the unit of measure between English and metric, does that mm. affect sales around the world? Should we change to, to metric from English? Oh, man, Jimmy Carter tried that. <laughs> I, just, I, I, remember, I remember the road signs with miles and kilometers. And um, Boy, you know, I'm not aware of any. Um, Aka might be a better place to. It adds cost to us, because we have different products and different tooling, and different machines, and different documents. So it's, it's somewhat inefficient, but... Maybe I can help David. We are struggling <laughs> with that, to be honest. Because we have products, which we... Uh, Durance, for example. When we took over Durance, the plan in Germany didn't have the gauges. So it's an additional cost to us. But on the other hand, I think it's, it's good for us that we can handle it. So that's an advantage we have to us. So I do want to see it as a disadvantage. But the, the Americans are more than welcome to avoid <laughs> miles. I like so, kilometers, that's yeah. for sure. But again, I think in general, black and white, it's more an advantage for us because we can handle it. Yeah. So it's not costing us sales, but there is a no, cost involved. It's a cost and involved, complexity. Yeah. yeah. As a starting point. Right. I have another question that was submitted online, David. It's for someone in uh, North America in the process area. What efforts are being done at the manufacturing facilities to reduce costs and leverage supply chain to improve margins? There are a lot, a lot of exciting things going on there. You almost have to go vertical by vertical. Uh, we have 45 manufacturing plants. Now we have 48 with KEF. We have, we have three more. And uh, the, 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 ver the global vertical organizations each of them have developed plans to leverage the global supply chain. So we have, for example, Pressure Management Group. They've identified products that they can manufacture both in, um, in Stafford in China and also Stafford in their, in their factory in France. And we'll, we'll use the optimal supply chain depending on customer requirements. Uh, we can balance load. Within, within oil and gas, 
uh, just this last year, they made a very painful and tough decision to close our uh, uh, Bellucci plant in Argentina because we had excess capacity. We can, we can make those ball valves elsewhere. But because they have a global view to things, they're, they're, they're able to optimize that. Um, uh, the, uh, the, the actuation and controls, I mentioned the, the, the smart service center. What, what, what's important for their operational strategy is to have local presence with customers. So they've expanded the smart service center in Brazil to give them that local ability to serve. Because the, the, the critical role our plants have, as you all know, is to deliver products on time and quality and cost. And sometimes, geographically, we just have to be close to customers. And so, that, so many of our organizations are, are focused on that. Great. I do have uh, time for one more. Uh, so it, this is from uh, Peter Ray. Peter the Ray. <laughs> he was here. He was here for the service meeting. He could have asked me the question. <laughs> it's actually not a question. It's oh, a state of it's fact. State, it's a state of fact. He's that Canada won the Stanley <laughs> won the Stanley Cup because most of the Bruins are Canadians. Okay, so <laughs> it's a it's a moral victory for Canada, right? Yes, oh, thank okay. you, Peter. All right. <laughs> and, and we, we do have. Um, <laughs> we do have one last last question, and, and this is uh, from Patrick. Oh, for and, Patrick. And uh, he's wondering if you can play "Happy Birthday" for Joni. Oh, <laughs> you know we don't have all the notes. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Let's try it, okay? Let's try "Happy Birthday." Get your bells out. After now, we didn't practice this before. We're going to run out of notes, so we'll sing the other notes. I was I was actually wondering: Is there a Bruins theme song? Bruins fight song? We can try that next time. Okay, so we're going to try Happy Birthday. This is unrehearsed, as you all know. So Joni, if she's watching, so go da 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 da. I think that's right. No, no. It's good. Huh? <laughs> What? No. Ba, ba. Yeah, it's you. Ba, ba, ba. There we go. Happy birthday, Joni. All right, thank you. Is that it? Are we wrapped? Are we going to do Ode to Joy one more time? Okay, all right. We had the Boston Pops are coming back, so we're going to fade out and do the, do the, um, ready? Okay, hit it. All right. <laughs> hey, thank you all. You're all great sports about this. This was a lot of fun. And uh, the global organization really appreciates these communications and the sharing the success stories. Thanks for allowing us to take, take over your plan for a few days. Thank you. Thank you.